I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's News Update. The wife of Jonathan Pollard has called on Israel's leaders to renew their requests for her husband's release. Esther Pollard said on Tuesday that she was, quote, puzzled that Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu did not mention Pollard during Rosh Hashanah interviews he gave to the Jerusalem Post and to Israel Hayom, saying that the Jewish high holiday season was a time when leaders can make special requests and when such requests can be granted as a gesture of goodwill to the Jewish people. She said, I urge and implore both Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Peres to exploit the golden opportunity that the High Ho Holy Days present in order to make a heartfelt appeal on behalf of the people of Israel for Jonathan's immediate release. Mrs. Pollard also called on President Obama to respond to a request for Jonathan's release reiterated last week by 1,200 American rabbis from all four major streams of Judaism during a conference call with the president before Rosh Hashanah. Jonathan Pollard was convicted of spying for Israel in 1986 and is serving a life sentence. Ynet reports that Israeli ambassador to the United Nations Ron Prosor made his first speech as vice president of the United Nations General Assembly Wednesday saying that Israel opposes unilateral decisions regarding the Palestinians. Prasor's remarks come just a week before Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is set to speak at the General Assembly to ask for recognition of a Palestinian state as a non-member of the UN. Prasor has said in the past that unilateral actions will not bring peace to the region and that the Palestinians cannot bypass the only way to peace, which is through negotiations. Prasor was elected to serve as one of the General Assembly's 21 vice presidents in June and took office earlier this month. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee, or APAC, expressed its praise for the Obama administration and the U.S. Congress in a statement issued ahead of Rosh Hashanah on Sunday for the, quote, unshakable partnership between the United States and Israel saying President Obama and the bipartisan, bicameral congressional leadership have deepened America's support for Israel in difficult times. AIPAC also said that U.S.-Israel security has reached, quote, unprecedented levels under the leadership of Democrats and Republicans working together. The Anti-Defamation League expressed their support for Senate hearings taking place Wednesday on hate crimes. ADL National Chair and ADL National Director, respectively, Robert Sugarman and Abe Foxman said they welcomed the Senate hearings in response to hate violence and the implementation of the Federal Hate Crimes Prevention Act, or HCPA, citing the recent bias-motivated deadly shooting at a Sikh house of worship in Wisconsin as another demonstration of the tragic impact of hate crimes and the vital partnership efforts to prevent and respond to such extremism. A United States Senate subcommittee will hold the hearings before the Senate Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights and Human Rights Wednesday afternoon. The ADL played a lead role in coordinating advocacy efforts by a broad coalition of civil rights, religious, educational, professional, law enforcement and civic organizations working in support of the HCPA for more than a decade until its enactment in October of 2009. Four Jewish philanthropists are among the latest individuals to sign the Giving Pledge, committing to giving the majority of their wealth to charity. The Giving Pledge was initiated by Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates, under which the wealthiest American individuals and families agree to give more than half of their wealth to philanthropy or charitable causes during or after their lifetimes. Jewish philanthropists Dan and Jennifer Gilbert, Peter Lewis and Charles Bronfman were announced Tuesday as 11 most recent philanthropists to have signed the pledge. Dan Gilbert founded Quicken Loans and owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. Peter Lewis is chairman of Progressive Insurance. Charles Bronfman chairs the Andrea and Charles Bronfman Philanthropies and co-chairs Birthright Israel. He said in a statement Tuesday, doing what we can to repair the world was instilled in me from an early age. I will never forget my siblings and me knitting squares for blankets to be sent to the troops during World War II. This was an inspiration from my mother, Bronfman said. It's no surprise then that each of us has tried to contribute to society in our own way. 
Bronfman is among 92 other philanthropists, including his brother Edgar, who have committed to the Giving Pledge to date. And that's Shalom TV's news update. I'm Tisha Bader.